Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I'm Jimmy Wisenhunt, game designer here on H1Z1. We just got back from E3, ran a bunch of demos over there. We focused a lot on showing off combat, vehicles, and building. Uh, so today, we're going to run through that with you guys, so you can get the opportunity to see what we were doing over there, as well as we're going to be able to show the bow. We, we couldn't even do that at E3, so we're pretty stoked to show it off. So let's jump on in. All right, so we're here in game. This is H1Z1. For those of you guys not familiar, H1Z1 is a post-apocalyptic MMO survival game. It's kind of a mouthful, but uh, it's what we're working on here at SOE. And uh, as you can see, the world's pretty big, right? There's, there's a lot of things that can happen here. The goal really is sandbox gameplay. And we want everything to be super intuitive. Imagine you're dropped in the woods with less than what you have in your pockets right now. Uh, you've, got a, you've got an axe, you've got a flashlight. I'm cheating a little bit for the purpose of showing you guys all this. I have a uh, backpack and some things in here that would typically take me a couple weeks to get all the materials for and craft so we can show that off. But uh, yeah, so all you're going to start off with, you have a shirt, you've got your jeans here, and um, yeah, that's about all you got. So we want it to be very, very intuitive in the way that I have an axe, I can go in my inventory here, I can see in the crafting window to make a campfire I need wood. So I need to chop down a tree. And you know, over the years I've been trained playing video games that if there's an axe stuck in a stump, or there's a tree and I have an axe that I just can't chop it down. Thankfully, I get an opportunity to work on a game where we can actually have some fun and be able to chop these tree down, these trees down and uh, get all the materials you need in a pretty easy way. Now, I want to point out that as I chop this thing down, you'll see it here in a bit, but they're going to fall. And it's going to make a lot of noise. And as you're looking off in the distance, just imagine that one of these trees comes falling down right now. It alerts me to a couple of things. There's a player out there, and uh, he's in the middle of trying to get materials together. So I can go out there and I can jack his stuff I wanted to. I could hope that maybe he has something I need, or I could just avoid him altogether. Um, even just go out and try to make a friend. You got to be careful those type of situations. People get a little crazy in these games, and it's definitely part of the fun. Um, but as I run through here, I'm going to try to get the materials together to show off the uh, bow, because I'm actually going to need it. There's a zombie running up on me right now, as a matter of fact. Let's actually deal with this real quick. Uh, since the last time that we showed a lot of this, it's, they're actually quite a bit harder to kill. Made it look a little easy there. But uh, So our discovery system is what starts your crafting, your crafting pathway. So discovery, essentially, I'm going to throw a log in here that I got from that tree. I'm going to click discover, and it's going to tell me that I can make wood planks. And this is going to look a little linear at first, but it now I made a wood plank. I'm going to take the wood plank, throw that in, and it's going to show me that I can make wood sticks. Now it's going to open up a little bit once I make one of these. So if I, uh, when I pulled this in, you notice a lot of the stuff grayed out. Now when I drag it in, I can combine that uh, wood plank with a wood stick, which means now I have a new recipe. So I'm going to click Discover, and it's going to tell me that I can make an animal trap. Animal traps is something you throw on the ground, and animals get trapped in it. You'll be able to pull them out, cook them, and uh, have food that way. And maybe some fur and stuff as we move forward. But really what I'm focusing on right now is I want the, um, I want the bow. And I don't know how to make that yet, so I'm going to actually pull my shirt off here, which usually isn't going to be an initial option. You can, but you're going to lose a lot of space. I have a backpack, so we're going to hurry on along. I got uh, some scraps of cloth out of that by, by salvaging. And uh, so now I'm going to take the stick, I'm going to take the uh, cloth, and then those two together are going to be a wooden bow. So I'm going to craft that out. And it should auto-equip. Yeah, there it is. Cool. So I am going to take these in. My crafting, here we go, and make a bunch of wood sticks, a bunch of wood planks, and then a bunch of wood sticks. I need to discover the fact that I can make arrows from sticks. Takes a little while. And now I have a bunch of arrows. So I have 15 arrows now. Cool, so we can move along now. I want to make sure that I got that out of the way quick because um, through, throughout this demo, we do play some things in the world, but you, every time we've run this demo at E3, we had no idea what to expect. We've seen very, very different situations, and a lot of it's due to the fact that we uh, have some emergent AI in our game. So as you run around, you may see a zombie. Other times you might see 20, or you might see nothing at all, and then you see a deer running out, and those 20 zombies were there last time are now chasing it directly at you. So it's, it's a very, very dynamic experience, even while we're running demos at E3, which is actually comes out to a lot of fun. It's not the same old thing every time. Um, I'm going to throw this vehicle down real quick, and I'm going to jump on in. When you find these vehicles in the world, they're typically going to be in different states of disrepair. So some of them are going to be missing a wheel, a battery, just different things that allow them to run. You're going to have to craft those items and put them inside the uh, inventory of the vehicle to repair them and get them working again. They also do use gas. You can see at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, uh, there's 95% uh, right now. They're really gas-heavy right now. 
Uh, of course, we do have the ragdoll in right now. All the zombies are rigged up for that. Uh, you will be, you will do damage to your vehicle, like as you do this. You're not just some unstoppable zombie killing juggernaut in a jeep. Um, you will want to try to hold back on doing this all the time. Uh, however, I'm not going to have too much extended use out of this, so I'm going to have some fun. And as you move along through a world, you're going to find some survival camps or survivor camps where you can kind of tell they didn't make it through here. And in these areas, you can find various things. You can find things like uh, pre-built campfires, and you can use those if you don't already have one. Kind of nice and easy. And uh, I'm going to try to run through here and see if we can find anything. Uh, you'll find containers like this in the world as well as things actually spawning on top of vehicles or on the ground on shelves. And things will be kind of where you expect them. So you're going to find food in shelves. You're not going to find it kind of laying around unless you're at a campsite and maybe around the campfire. Oh my god, I'm getting destroyed behind me. Um, making this look a little easy right now, zombies, and I think we want to continue down this path. It's pretty exciting is that it, they're pretty rough to kill unless you shoot them directly in the head. And the bow does have drop. It is a, um, a skill-based weapon. At point blank, it does take a while to draw out the bow and actually uh, get the arrow knocked and everything, as you can see here. It's not always the best decision to just hit them up close. So you can actually still push with the bow. You can push zombies back. You can also punch. Uh, but you need to right-click to actually pull that back. So I'm going to jump back in my vehicle here. Which it looks like I've taken some damage. I'm going to go around this direction. Um, just a little bit ago, I showed in my inventory, I have a couple things that you normally wouldn't start with. Uh, those are foundations. And these particular foundations are, are stilt foundations. They're built to be used uh, against hills and a little bit easier to place. And we'll show that right up here. We, at E3, were using our uh, dew collectors as uh, objects that snap onto foundations. And we actually found that we would rather have those to be something you can place into the world. And I'll show that right here jump on out real quick. I'm going to reach in my inventory. I'm going to grab one of these wood foundations, the stilt foundation. Now this is a high-end foundation. This is going to take you a while to build, as you could imagine. You see all these planks on it. You're going to have to gather all those and put those together. So I'm going to put this down right here. Go up our stairs, and I'm going to grab one of our pre-canned buildings. These will take a few more resources, but they're nice if you just want to plop down some storage on your property, uh, or you can door this off and just start to flesh it out using these buildings as well as walls and the like. Um, and the dew collector that we showed before is now placeable within the world. So you can actually find an area, or you can take over one of those campsites if you'd like, um, and just place that down there. So I am, it, what that'll be used for is situations when it's raining outside or in the mornings, it'll collect some fresh water. I actually think I did grab an empty bottle a little while ago. So I'm going to run on down to the lake down here. And I am going to put some water in it. And you'll see when I do this, it's going to be dirty water. Um, you can imagine right now going and drinking out of your local pond or lake. It's not a good idea without actually filtering that out, boiling the water, killing all the bad stuff in it. And after the apocalypse, I'm sure it's going to be a lot worse. So I'm going to use this bottle, and it gives me dirty water out of this because I'm standing here in the water. And if I drink that, it's going to do some damage to me. And I'll actually do that right now. It's going to do some damage to me, but it's also going to give me some hydration. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. You can filter that out with charcoal filters, filters and the like, boil the water. And, uh, but the dew collector solves that problem. As you start crafting that sort of thing out of a tarp and wood, you'll be able to be more self-sufficient and not worry about the dirty water. You can collect fresh water that way when it's raining. Actually, while we're on the topic, every day we do, uh, the system will pick what type of uh, day it's going to be. Uh, it could be a rainy day, a sunny day, it could be darker when it's cloudy outside. And you can see it can vary anything from this, which is a very light rain, which actually we think you can see here, all the way up to something like this. And you can see it actually affects the environment. It's going to affect the dynamics of the vehicles. Your character's going to get wet. He can get cold if it's too bad outside. You need to stay dry. Uh, we've actually worked out the system because we don't want anything to be decoration to not rain underneath trees. So you'll be safe under here. Throw down a campfire and you'll be solid. And dry everything out, cook your meal and all that fun stuff. So moving on forward here, I'm going to turn, turn the lights back on. I'm going to see what's happening. We actually have some zombies that are typically in this area, but this is where it's so unpredictable. Sometimes a deer comes running through here, a wolf causes a ruckus and they go running off. So let's see. Looks like there are some here. So we can hit this guy from this distance. Barely. And the rain also, it's also not just something that can affect your character and just be pretty on the ground. It actually affects the uh, how it looks during the day as far as like, the lighting and everything as well. So it is a little bit harder to hit these shots. I'm going to run up here and see if we can find anything. We had a gun up here for the demo. I'm actually glad that we don't have any more. I get to use the bow some more. And I'm actually not going to make it through. I'm a horrible shot with a bow, apparently. 
regardless of the fact I work on it, I can't shoot worth a darn. So I'm going to run back down to my Jeep. I'm going to go around the corner up here and uh, show you guys a little bit about our dynamic weather and uh, our time of day stuff. If you're not familiar with that, it is a full 24-hour day cycle. Uh, we do tune how long that lasts, uh, and I'll speed that up and show you guys what the day. Oh my God, what the days and the nights look like. As it, 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 it's a huge difference in gameplay depending on when you log in. We want to make sure that there are reasons to play at night as well. I'm actually just going to stop over here on this bridge and see if we can change the hour a little bit. This is a rainy day, and this is about noon on a rainy day. A really, really rainy day. Really Pacific Northwest, you can see there. And as it starts getting a little bit darker on in the day, let's say something like, uh, something like 10 o'clock. I'm sorry, 8 o'clock, rather. 8 o'clock at night starts getting pretty dark, and the darkest you'll see in our game is when it's raining outside and 3 a.m. And it gets pretty intense. Uh, you do start off with a flashlight. It will run out of battery. Um, it has changed our game completely. If you hadn't seen anything from us in a while, we used to have a torch. We pulled the torch from the starting equipment because, frankly, everyone was on fire within five seconds. And so was everything else. So, uh, flashlight, I think it looks a lot cooler. It adds a different uh, feel to the game, and uh, it's a better point light overall. But yeah, that is H1Z1 in a nutshell. I'm Jimmy Wisenhunt, game designer on the project. We look forward to giving you guys more updates on the game as we move forward, and uh, we hope to get you guys in as soon as we can. Thank you.